Uh, hello. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Happy 2021. Welcome to the very last 12 Gays of Christmas video. I am your host, Lauren Eloise, and today I'm going to answer some very gay questions. Thank you all so much for submitting these. I got so many. I filmed this video in December, but I didn't post it because it felt very rushed because I was trying to go through every single question like super fast so I could answer all you guys' questions, but I didn't like how that video turned out. So we're filming it again. I'm really sorry if I don't get to answer your question, but I've tried to answer the ones that will help the most people, if that makes sense. And also the ones that I find interesting. <laughs> anyway, let's just jump into the first question. What is your favorite memory of 2020? Ah, okay. How do I say this? So this story is a lot longer, but I'm gonna try and make it short because I'll tell it another day. It was the moment where I wrote on this paper plane that I wanted to know girl pal and I threw it in her room and then I left the place and whatever, I went home. And then she found it later and she took a photo of it and sent it to me and she was like so happy, surprised about finding it. And I feel like that moment was the best of 2020 because that was like, I think me kind of confirming that, yeah, I wanted to find out about her. And also it was just the start of something, which was, I guess, the best thing that came out of 2020. So that feeling of being so nervous and happy and all of that mixing around inside was probably the best thing. <laughs> this is not a gay topic, but what made you get rid of the rats and are you going to get more in the future? I didn't get rid of my rats. They unfortunately passed away at the end of 2018. So just over two years, I haven't had rats. I'm not going to be getting any more in the future because well, I made this whole video about it. Basically, I'm allergic to them, like severely allergic. And also they're so heartbreaking. Like I lost eight in the space of five years. It just, yeah, it just hurts. I freaking love rats and I still debate in the back of my mind whether I should get more or not in the future because I love them that much. But for now, I can't. I need a break. Have you ever regretted YouTube? That's a good question. I don't think so. 99% of the time, it's been a positive experience. Like, it's fun. What bothered me was when I had to take down my old relationship videos. I kind of regretted that I shared so much because, I don't know, it just felt crap having to tuck away all of that. I don't regret it because I know it helps so many people. I was also able to represent what a feminine relationship looks like at the time. I don't know. I hope that answers it. I don't regret it. It's been fun. How was your first time? So I was 19 and I'm telling you this information because a lot of people feel this pressure on them to have done or experimented or done certain things by a certain age. And then when you get to like 19, you feel so old and like you are less of a person because you haven't had any experience and I just want to let you know like if you're 19, 20, 21 and you haven't done anything that's totally fine. Anyway the story is it was me and my past relationship we had been dating for a couple of months. I think we slowly built up to doing things so I can't really pinpoint a certain time where something happened. It was just a slow build up. Oh, I can't remember. I think the first time that I you know reached the level of enjoyment whatever with someone else I felt a rush of embarrassment because you're so vulnerable in that situation but I do remember that little rush of embarrassment going ah I've just been so vulnerable with you. But yeah other than that I felt completely comfortable because we took things so slow. So yeah overall positive. Are you gay? Jokes. No, I'm straight. <laughs> How long have you been dating the girl from the happiest season premiere? We started seeing each other at the end of June. So I guess we were dating until October and then we became girlfriends at the start of October. So six months, pretty much. Six months of knowing each other and three months of being girlfriends. <laughs> Was it scary when you first came out on YouTube knowing that anybody could view it? No. Because I, the first video I posted on YouTube, I basically said that I was gay and I came to YouTube knowing that I would end up making gay content anyway. I also knew that YouTube, depends on what side of the internet you're on, but YouTube is generally a pretty accepting place if you find the right people. The thing that I found scariest was when I actually made my coming out video because I knew at some point people from like my school, like from six years ago, or my family would end up finding it and I was worried that it's just a little bit personal and a little bit of a, I don't want to say invasion of my privacy, but also it kind of is. I am posting 
so much stuff to the internet, but also at the same time, 99.999% of my audience doesn't know who I am, so that's okay and I feel comfortable sharing that information. But to people who know me from school, I wasn't really comfortable with them getting all this detail but I guess that was kind of scary because they can make a judgment on me based on what they know of me in the past. That's what I mean. Advice for teens who haven't come out to their parents. One, you don't have to come out, you can stay in the closet as long as you want and two, only do it if you feel safe and comfortable and three, if you do it, explain why you're telling them because you want to be yourself, you want them to know, you want their support. I think they're the most important things. <laughs> when did you know you were gay? I didn't know until I started dating my best friend when I was 19. I then figured everything out. Looking at the past, I was like, oh yeah, this makes sense. <laughs> Who did you first come out to? Depends actually on whether you mean when I came out as lesbian or when I came out as asexual because I came out as asexual when I was like 16 or 17. And I think that was to my best friend at the time who then ended up being my girlfriend. So she was the first one. But the first one that I told, I didn't really say that I was gay, but I told my sister that I was dating my best friend. So that was the first person. Will you ever do videos with your new girlfriend? Also, I'm so happy for you, congrats. Thank you. I made three videos with this girl pal. I vlogged when we went to see Happier Season because I brought her along to that. <laughs> and then I made two videos for the 12 Gays of Christmas with her. The last one that I made, I made because we're trying to find like an easy one that I could film so that I could easily finish the 12 Gays of Christmas. So I, I didn't originally plan to have her in another one, but the reacting to lesbian movies, I knew that she would be in that one because she genuinely just loves movies and well so she's gay so she has seen some of these and I thought it would just be a really good dynamic for that video. I filmed a video in February and I didn't post it until pretty recently last year about whether or not I would actually post videos with whoever my future girlfriend was online and at the time in February my opinion was I was more on the side of I don't want to because I, I want that privacy and I don't want to feel pressured to make that kind of content like that's not what I want my channel to be and I still feel that way now I don't want to be making relationship videos because it's just not for me I've done it before I don't want to repeat it again I want that stuff to be private and just for me to enjoy and not have the pressure of you know other people's opinions and stuff on the internet I can tell that she wants to be in them like that doesn't phase her which is super exciting for me because I still would like to every now and again maybe post something if you know if there's a reason I'm definitely not keeping it private but I just don't want to say you can expect to see her heaps more because it's just I just don't want to do that I do believe it is so important to represent a feminine lesbian relationship because that's one of the reasons I started my channel in the first place and I want to show like this is what a lesbian relationship could look like. I definitely needed that when I was younger and I think that is extremely helpful to other people but there's still I don't want to do too much because you just never know what's going to happen in the future and I don't want to go through what I did previously. <laughs> I hope that we are able to find a nice little middle ground and you guys just enjoy the content whenever it comes out. Yeah I just don't want to promise anything because I just don't know. I just don't know. <laughs> if I'm in love with my best friend, but she told me that she's straight and has a boyfriend, how do I tell her I love her more than a friend? Ah, okay. Firstly, she's told you she's straight, so she's not gonna be interested. Secondly, she has a boyfriend, so again, she's not interested. You can tell her if you want to, but know that she already isn't interested. And I know that sucks. I'm not trying to make you upset because I've been there. I have been there. You're gonna lift a whole weight off your chest by telling her. So I would tell her if you wanna feel that relief, but just don't expect anything to come out of it. Where do you see yourself in 10 years time? Man, I can't even look that far ahead. Like, I don't know. I would be 34. <laughs> I hope by the time that I'm 34, I would have traveled the world when it's safe again because I want to get out of this country just to experience different stuff. I hope that I have tried quite a few different jobs and been in a few different teams. Also, I hope to be married, also probably have a kid, I think, or two, I don't know. I don't really want to think about that right now because it's just so distant. <laughs> do you believe in Santa Claus? Of course I do. <laughs> if so, do you think he actually has a wife or they're just lying to us and he has a husband? I think he has a husband because we never see Mrs. Claus ever. Like she's never talked about. So I think she's just a myth and just a cover up. 
he actually has a husband. Do you go to church or believe in God? I've never been to church and I'm also atheist, so I don't believe in God or that there is a God, but I completely accept that other people have different viewpoints and are religious, so that's totally fine. How do you deal with the pressure of looking gay? I sometimes struggle to find my own sense of style because I feel like I need to look more gay or that I'm looking too lesbian. So firstly, just ignore the lesbian stereotype. You don't need a dress or look a certain way. Lesbian TikTok does this a lot and I even wear certain things just to make TikToks. But at the end of the day, it's just clothes. Just wear what you're comfortable with. Also experiment. You'll find your own sense of style in time. If you look at me like four years ago, all I wore was t-shirts and shorts because that's what I was comfortable in. But slowly over time, I have developed like a sense of style, which I think is still developing and still will. Ignoring what lesbians wear because I literally don't care. Just wear what you want. How do you accept your label? I'm lesbian and I love the label itself. It just feels a bit extreme since I'm young. I'm 13 and I know I'm only attracted to girls. Labels are just words that we use to categorize things as humans. You don't have to have a label if you don't want to. If you do use a label, all it's doing is helping you put words to how you feel and also helping others understand how you feel because of the words attached to that label. Like that's all it is. It took me a long time to accept the word lesbian. I used to use gay all the time because it felt lighter and less scary, I think. Lesbian was a word that was only associated with bad things back when I was in high school. So maybe just use the word queer or gay for now if that makes you feel a little bit better, but also just give yourself time and you'll be able to feel like that label belongs to you. How do you deal with the fact that you have to come out every single day? Maybe not so much now because because of the pandemic but in normal everyday life we have to come out to strangers if it's safe and I find that hard to do yes it's a thing when you're LGBTQ plus you have to come out all the time but I found the longer that I've been lesbian the less I come out to people you'd be surprised like you don't need to tell people who you're attracted to in everyday life I think that's because I feel it's irrelevant to the conversation or to the people I'm talking to they don't need to know just like I don't need to know their sexuality so I think asking yourself in situations if you knew their sexuality would that benefit the conversation or anything? Because if it doesn't, then you don't need to share yours. I understand though, sometimes you feel like you need to. You've got to judge whether the situation is safe or not safe. I just do that by judging my gut feeling. If I don't feel it's a good idea to say it, I won't say it, I won't mention it. How do I know I'm actually a lesbian and it's not a phase? I've been doubting it a lot because I've had crushes on boys in the past, but also girls I just never noticed. There was a few questions like this and I wanna let you know that your past does not define what you feel like now. So please, if you're thinking about like, I liked boys in the past, you don't have to worry about that because I had a crush on a boy when I was in kindergarten. I had a crush on a boy when I was in year seven. I had a crush on a boy when I was in like year nine. If it's something that you can't shake and just feels so true and so right then it's not a phase you just need to give yourself time to completely accept that what inspired you to join youtube you're inspirational keep it up much love thank you i have always made videos whether i was on youtube or not i had made videos like my entire life and youtube just was something that was gonna happen at some point i did start a channel when i was like 17 and then i deleted everything and i also had one back when i was 13 as well but i've always made videos so it just makes sense that i would have one and also a big factor in me making a channel was I wanted to represent feminine lesbians. Before I came out, no one really looks like me and if I had known that people who looked like me existed and were lesbian, maybe I would have figured myself out a lot faster. So I wanted to represent us gays in that kind of way. And also I had never seen two feminine lesbians in a relationship. So that's what I kind of made relationship videos with my girlfriend at the time back then. Cause I wanted to show that, you know, this is what a lesbian relationship can look like. Struggling with mental health, anything you recommend to try and help? Therapy. If you haven't started therapy, seeing a psychologist or a therapist or a counselor, that is always my number one advice. I did it. It was terrifying at the time. I was so terrified, but I wish I hadn't put it off for so many years because that is the number one thing that helped the most. I know it's terrifying, but it is so helpful. Favorite thing about Wear It Purple? 
you. <laughs> no. So wear it purple is a day in Australia where you wear purple clothes to show LGBT youth that you support them. And this year I became an ambassador for them. I think my favourite thing is one that the idea of wearing purple clothes is so easy and subtle to do. It's not let's wear rainbow today to show everyone we support them. It's more of like a kind of like oh like if you look at someone who's wearing purple you're like yeah I know you know that kind of thing I like that I also really like that it's Australian it just hits so close to home because it literally is home I have my experience of what it was like to grow up in this country as someone who's LGBTQ plus it's easy for me to be able to relate to and help people in those situations too how can I tell if a girl is ghosting me or genuinely busy I get anxious and I don't know if they're interested or not ah Okay, if she's ghosting you, she's gonna space out her replies by like weeks or days or whatever. Her replies are gonna be really short and they're not gonna carry the conversation. So if she's just answering your question and she's not going, okay, but what is your opinion on this? Or like turning it around to you, then she's probably not that interested. If she actually is genuinely like, Oh my god, I'm so sorry that I haven't replied because I'm so busy. Maybe she is just busy. Something you can do is just stop replying for a while and see if she actually replies back to you. I mean, you could always just ask her straight up, like, hey, do you still want to talk? Also, at the same time, go with your gut feeling because your gut feeling is usually right. Do you believe in climate change? I think in 2021, we need to stop asking that question because the science and the facts are there. Climate change is real. It's not like a religion where people believe in it or not. It's fact. It's a thing. I think we need to move past and ask instead, like, what are you doing about climate change? You know, those type of questions rather than, is it real? Is it not real? If you didn't listen and kind of like zoned out, yes, I believe in climate change. <laughs> Will you ever cut your hair? Yes, I'm gonna cut it, okay? I'm literally gonna cut it. I am cutting it this month. It's gone. All of this gone. It doesn't look really long now because it's in a plait so it's a bit longer than this but I'm going to be donating it so I will talk about that in another video. <laughs> and the last question, how's your skin so fucking perfect and glowy? When I asked for these questions the photo that I used on Instagram was one with a filter so please know that I used a filter for that. And secondly my skin is not perfect. You probably can't tell from here because we're not zoomed in but like it's really not. It was a lot worse than this, but what I did was I started drinking like two liters of water every single day and getting a lot more sleep. And those were the things I think that helped me the most. I also actually stopped washing my face in the morning. I used to wash my face morning and night and suddenly it got a whole lot better just washing it once at night. If you guys have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I will answer them. I want to thank you for all the questions you submitted and thank you so much for being on this journey of the 12 Gays Christmas. There's hair in my mouth. It really means a lot to me to have been so engaged with you guys over December. It was so, so fun. So much hard work, but so worth it. And I really, really do appreciate you being here. And also, I wanna thank you so much for 20,000 subscribers. I, I honestly don't have words besides thank you. I couldn't even imagine getting this number one day. My camera battery is about to die, so I'm gonna go. If you enjoyed this, give a thumbs up. It helps a lot. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss another video. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. I actually am so surprised how many straight guys watch me. I literally thought it was three, but I think it's a little bit more than that. I also left another Easter egg at the end of the Never Have I Ever. If you uh, wanna go and watch that one, you should.